Uh, okay, so can I ask you about Charlie Sheen? Who? <laughs> <laughs> so it's so funny because, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, Charlie's Angels when he was dating uh, Brie Olson and uh, like Celeste and Jana and I think... There was some other There's girl, and then so he was engaged many. to Brett Rossi. Like he, you know, before all that publicity was around him with those girls, you were the first like <laughs> porn girl, basically with Charlie. And I think you were like one of his. You guys were together for a long time. We were together steady for two years, and then off again, on again for another three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I met Charlie. I was working. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have a. a a decent mainstream career. I've mm-hmm. now done more mainstream movies than I have porn. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So I was on the set of Young Guns 2. I'd been cast in it. Oh, I loved that movie. Yeah, no, you missed all my good stuff. They had a four hour finish I cut love- and they cut all the girls out. I have a scene oh, where uh, Young Guns, who else was in it? Well, uh, what's his Sutherland. name? What's his uh, name? Blue. Lou, Lou, Lou Phillips. Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phillips. That's who so it was. So I fucked Lou Diamond Phillips. Um, <laughs> who else did I fuck on that set? Uh, Christian Slater. Oh my God. I was obsessed with Christian Slater when oh, I was Oh, I tied kid. him to the bed with my <sighs> belt and just took advantage of him. Uh, and then I lives almost- Lives you have lived, Ginger. I almost fucked William Peterson. He left his number at the front desk for me. <laughs> but that was the night that Charlie came in. And so now I'm, I'm I, you know, making my way through the crew or the cast. <laughs> Um, I'm making my way through and Charlie, Charlie, I'd heard for a while that Charlie wanted to meet me Mm -hmm. and I knew that he, I didn't want to be a star fucker. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, there's certain things that just make me go, "Mm." Yeah, you know, I'll tell you about it after I did it, but I, it's not my goal to go out and fuck stars. Yeah. Like if you meet someone and you like them, then you'll have sex with them, but you don't purposely go out to have sex with celebrities just because they're a celebrity. No, although he was so good looking that uh, at that time that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I we meet and what we would do after filming every day we were shooting in uh, in Arizona is meet in the lobby of this big wonderful hotel that we were staying at. We would have drinks and everybody would just meet and sit there and mingle and and talk and hang out. And then after that, later in the night, we would all go to the strip club mm. like every night. Oh wow! So Charlie comes in that first day and uh, I'm in my room. And I'd been to the strip club the night before. I'm in the bathroom, the hurling in the toilet. And I hear Charlie's voice go, is Ginger Lynn here? The, the entrance to my, 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 uh, hotel, it was, they were like cottages. The entrance to my cottage had the bathroom right next to the, the door. Right. So I'm in there. Were <laughs> you hung over? Oh my God. I'm hung over. I'm <laughs> hurling all over the place. I'm sicker than a dog. I've got diarrhea and Charlie's at the door and I'm trying to be quiet <laughs> and, and there's like nothing I can do. So uh, thank God my friend Alexis, uh, just, she was working on the film with me and, and we shared a room. Uh, she said, you know, Ginger's not here right now. And Charlie didn't ask. So I met him later after filming um, in the lobby of the hotel. And I remember I sat on the sofa and he sat on the arm of the sofa and he brought me my drinks. And we started talking and getting to know each other. And, uh, we went to a strip club and I bought him two girls mm-hmm. that I picked out for him to mm-hmm. dance for him. And he said, if he had chosen, those are the girls that he would have chosen. And so we're, you know, we've got Kiefer's up on the stage. The strippers are all over him. I've got Charlie over in the corner with all the best looking strippers. Everybody's at Lou Diamond. Like everybody is partying. Bothell's our Getty's there. He's like 16 and he's in the strip club. Um, <laughs> it was just, it was a big party. Yeah. Um, and so, and it was Valentine's Day. And I remember very clearly because after we left the strip club, I went back and went to Charlie's room. Mm-hmm. And we were in the bed. We hadn't done anything yet, but he took off his engagement ring mm-hmm. and the phone rang. And he said, I have to take this. And this was before cell phone. So it was his right. phone in his room was ringing. And he was engaged to Kelly Preston at the time. So it was Kelly calling. I didn't even know that they were engaged. Yes. Yes. Wow. And, and he had just shot her. It was it was an accident. Mm-hmm. The gun fell. And, uh, oh, wait. Oh, oh, he'd shot her with a gun. With Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Like you shot her in a movie. I was no. like, well, was he directing now or something? No, with a gun. Oh, boy. That's a whole other story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. But I remember him saying, you know, happy Valentine's Day. I love you. And and I'm laying there next to him and just waiting for him to get off the phone to fuck his brains out. Yeah. And so we had that night together. He stayed for another four or five days. Um, I came back to Los Angeles and the boyfriend that I was with uh, when I left out of the story was maybe a month or so before he decided to look at my, one of my porn movies and he had never seen one. And a porn period? One of my porns. Oh, okay. I was going to say. One of my porns. And so I can't, went from being don't idolized. Don't tell me it was the Ron Jeremy one. No, I don't. <laughs> no, he didn't tell me which one he watched. But no, all of a sudden I was a cocksucker. I was a whore. I had my foot on both sides of the fence. Wow. And I, the, the, the nicest guy in the world has now got me on the floor in the corner, like crying the night before I'm leaving to do Young Guns 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I told him, I, I said, I'm done. Mm-hmm. So I flew off and I was fully ready to fuck every single person on the cast and crew. Right. Uh, so I uh, got back and moved out of my house and moved into a hotel. And uh, Charlie and I just hung out nonstop. And I remember there was one of his friends was getting married and his makeup artist. And he wanted me to arrange for the girls for the party. So I had just danced up in San Francisco and San Francisco girls are down for anything. They're awesome. They're mm-hmm. just wild, fun girls. Yeah. So I called, you know, the people that I knew and Charlie arranged for a private jet and we had all the girls fly in and we flew everybody to Las Vegas and, uh, and we had this big party and I brought these giant tarps and gallons of baby oil and dildos for everybody. <laughs> oh, and, Jesus. you know, just brought dildos for everybody. Yeah, dildos <laughs> for everybody. You know, I, I took on the set decorating and <laughs> prop master. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and so everybody's like getting excited and turned on and the girls are all there and everybody's drinking, everybody's partying. And Charlie pulls me aside and he said, are you going to get out there and join the girls and they said no i wasn't planning on it and he goes good because i really dig you and that was I, I really dig you was was the term and uh he broke up with with kelly on saint patrick's day wow so that was february to march so within a month of us meeting he broke his engagement off right and then we were just on we were inseparable for for two years we we fucked like bunnies Charlie, I, I, as far as like a performer, oh my God. Like we would fuck six times a day, easy, no problem every fucking day. Wow. He would have been like the strongest performer ever in his heyday, mm-hmm. in his heyday. And, you know, I I don't want to say that we would still be together if this didn't happen, but we had gotten so close that Charlie's agents, Charlie's managers, Charlie's family, mm-hmm. people were telling him, she's going to hold you back. She's going to ruin your career. You've got to, you've got to do this. And Charlie and I went around and around and around and even got to the point where Charlie had made arrangements, if I was willing to do it, to have reconstructive surgery on my face and to plan my own death. He had that, that was our plan so that we could be together. I was going to go to Europe for a couple of years, get an accent so that we could, and he would come and see me all the time. I mean, that's how serious we were. And that's how fucked up the, the powers that, that were in. Wait, you were going to fake your own death and come back as a different person? I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the only reason I didn't was because of my grandmother and my dad. I just, I just couldn't do it to my family. Yeah. Um, but I, it, it was, I. That's a lot to ask. I was so in love. Yeah. I was so in love. I, I, I was this close to doing it. I wow. was this close. And when you're that in love and, and both of you are and you've got people tearing you apart and pulling at you, it was just – that's why the last three years were so difficult because it was – we had to sneak. We had, you know – like I mean, the moment we saw each other in Cannes, it was just like two people in the commercial running along the beach. Yeah, slow you know? motion yeah, to each other. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it was my first love, my, the first time I was ever in love with anybody um that's really heartbreaking